This clip is part of my blog on intelligence research. Recently, I had an experience that captured my mind. I met a young boy, about five years old, bright, curious, and of tan skin. So that there is no misunderstanding. I am Central European. And while we have all kinds of hang-ups, we don't have hang-ups on race. This little guy, I thought, could one day be brilliant, an Einstein, making a five-figure income advancing mankind. It is not going to happen for two reasons. For one, his father had no interest in the boy's education, leaving that to public schools. Two, he is in good company. Congress neither has an interest, nor does the current sitting president, whose father once said his dog Millie could have done a better job. I'm a dogman and I agree. No child left behind? Give me a break. If you are still with me, allow me to present the two premises on which this clip is based. First, a society with an elevated IQ level will A. be more innovative and B. have a higher income. Take Silicon Valley as an example. Second, the human IQ is not a crystallized measure but a variable that fluctuates. Since I believe that we agree on point one, I will concentrate on proving point two, namely that we can increase our IQ at will. For a long time and until very recently, intelligence researchers have held that the human IQ is determined by genetic factors, not by long shot. Having been a member of the research staff at the Frankfurt Institute for Planungstechnik, a privately funded think tank, I have shown already in the mid to late 60s that the human IQ is stimulus dependent. My research was confirmed in the 70s by Lange and Lehrl of the University of Erlangen who ran studies on hospitalized patients, taking IQ tests on admission and in weekly intervals. Their studies too showed that the IQ deteriorates when not exposed to stimuli and increases even beyond the admission IQ when a patient brain is challenged. I was able to increase the IQ of my test subjects from an average of 102 to between 130 and 140 within 90 to 120 days. My method consisted of exposing them to extremely challenging information, reading medical literature, for example, learning new language under time constraint, and similar things. The cause for the human ability to increase intelligence is what is known as brain plasticity, the ability to adapt to new challenges, new environments. My video blog starts out with a clip that shows the amputation of the right half of the brain of a girl that suffered from a severe form of Rasmussen syndrome, frequent seizures interfering with her life. She walked out of the hospital in seven days and today has intellectually as well as physically adapted to every day's challenges. This is a must-see without which you may not believe what I say. My suggestion is, if you have children, challenge them intellectually as early in life as possible. Two, three, four years is a good start. Teach them how to read as early on as you can. Next, I suggest to you to view the internet as an extension of your brain an extension of your memory that delivers on demand so pretty much most, if not all, knowledge you ever need. While I agree that MySpace and Facebook may be a destruction, Google and YouTube, as you know by now, are not. Rather, they contain an enormous amount of knowledge, from an introduction to reading, to algebra, to you name it. 
Think about it. In my next clip, I will make a few suggestions on how to get your mind up to speed. To give you an idea where we are going, I am contesting the notion that mental handicaps are a God-given status. Far from it. We can cure dyslexia, and this may scare you, autism, most dementia, unless the brain is beyond repair, and more. Do not listen to the can't-be-done crowd, whose IQ is safely stored in a box labeled 80. Start thinking outside the box. As to our kids, we'll need to develop exciting learning methods and get away from the dead, boring stuff used today. Think of Einstein, who flunked his high school exam, finally made it, got a job at the Swiss patent office, was exposed to an enormous amount of new ideas, and when his brain was challenged, became the Einstein we know him as. No offense, but watching football is a severe form of autism. I mean, 12 guys throwing rubber balls at each other? Come on. See you next time around. <laughs>